So uh, the president's personal attorney, Michael Cohen, has had his um, rooms, offices, uh, house raided. This is a very significant move. Uh, they are coming for his documents related to Stormy Daniels and McDougal and perhaps other documents related to the National Enquirer and perhaps related to Robert Mueller's investigation. So uh, I'm going to tell you what they came for, how they did it, why it's okay, and of course how Donald Trump is enraged over it. So lots of fun for everybody, uh, although of course uh, the country is in turmoil as usual under the Trump administration. So let's begin to explain. First we go to HuffPost, agencies documents relating to a $130,000 payment to Stormy Daniels, the adult film star as well as emails, interesting, tax records even more interesting, and business documents, perhaps even more interesting. Because sure, if it's all just about Stormy Daniels, uh, Michael Cohen might be in a world of trouble as we're gonna explain or have legal experts explain to you in a minute. Uh, but if it's related to business documents that also touch on Donald Trump, uh, Trump could be in even bigger trouble, especially if they have something to do with the Russians. So now let me go to Axios, a White House source talked to them and said, Mueller's investigations has been drip, drip. This was a giant leap forward, a personal hit. They were moving in inches, today they moved a mile. So obviously a huge uh, news story here and the White House has taken it as such. Uh, the Washington Post says Cohen is under federal investigation for possible bank fraud, wire fraud, and campaign finance violations. All of those are enormously serious and could have put him away for a long, long time, unless of course he cooperates. Which would also be interesting. Uh, now uh, we're going to go to um, Michael Cohen's attorney, uh, Stephen Ryan. Now listen to this quote because this is very relevant to what investigations this raid touches on. He says, "I have been advised by federal prosecutors that the New York action, which is the raid, is in part a referral by the Office of Special Counsel Robert Mueller." Initially, everybody took that to mean that this is not part of the Mueller investigation. Mueller referred it to New York where local prosecutors then went and did this raid and are now pursuing the Stormy Daniels investigation and possible campaign finance violations, etc. But if you notice, he said that it was in part a referral by the Office of Special Counsel. And not only that, uh, now, lawyers are correctly pointing out that, well, Mueller might have referred it, but that doesn't mean it's because they're in charge of the investigation. Or it could mean they're in charge of uh, one investigation, the Stormy Daniels one. But they could also be serving, and I know this is an uncomfortable term, as the taint team. Okay, it is what it is, that is a legal term. And the reason is you don't want to taint the, the information that you get from that investigation if it in fact is attorney client privilege. You don't want Mueller's team to see it because they're not allowed to see it if it relates to their investigation and it is actually privileged. If it is not privileged, then Mueller's team can see it and the Southern District of New York can pass that on to them. So that's why it might serve a dual purpose, not only to get Trump and Cohen on Stormy Daniels, but possibly to touch the Russian investigation, but first, it would have to get past the taint team. So, very interesting on a couple of counts and gives you a sense of how broad this could be. Now we go to law and crime. They explain to go after communications between an attorney and a client, prosecutors have to have reason to believe that those communications were used in furtherance of a crime or fraud. In other words, look, going after somebody is already a big deal, raiding their house is a huge deal. Doing it to an attorney who might have attorney client privilege is a enormous deal. So it is not like, oh, what's the big deal? Like Giuliani uh, was talking to the Washington Post and he's like, well, it, it might be uh, to find evidence that the prosecutors could use or it could be to uh, make sure that they are cleared. <laughs> Other prosecutors laughed and laughed at that idea. No, prosecutors do not go to a federal judge and get a warrant uh, on a case this sensitive with potential attorney client privilege being involved as well because they'd like to clear the suspect. No, they, they do it because they think they already have an enormous amount of evidence, enough evidence to convince the judge of this and they'd like to get more evidence possibly because that evidence might be being destroyed. 
Now, we don't know that that's the case, but that is one of the alternatives as to why they would have such urgency in raiding someone's house or their office. Now, back to the Washington Post, they explain, Cohen is Trump's virtual vault, the keeper of his secrets from his business and deals to his personal affairs and the executor of his wishes. So whatever Trump has done, Michael Cohen very likely knows about it. That is part of why Donald Trump is losing his mind as we speak. You know, they arrested a lot of other people. He got angry in some cases, mildly disturbed in others. And in this case, it is nuclear because Michael Cohen has done a lot of business deals with Donald Trump. And he apparently knows where the bodies are buried. And so if they've got his documents, Tick, 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 tick. Okay. Uh, Mark S. Zaid, uh, who is a Washington lawyer, uh, expert in this field, says the seizure of Cohen's records should be, quote, the most concerning for the president. And apparently it is, because the president is not happy about it. This is what he said last night. It's a, an attack on our country in a true sense, it's an attack on what we all stand for. Uh, so when I saw this and when I heard it, I heard it like you did. I said, that is really now in a whole new level of unfairness. No, it is not remotely an attack on our country. In fact, it is upholding our finest traditions that no one is above the law. And so if all of the people in the Trump administration signed off on this warrant as they did, as I'll explain to you in a minute, and a federal judge signed off on it, uh, well, that is exactly what our rule of law is meant to do. It might be a personal attack on you because you might have broken the law and so might your lawyer, but that is not an attack on our country, it's quite the opposite. More from Trump. This is the <clears throat> most uh, the biased group of people. These people have the biggest conflicts of interest I've ever seen. Uh, Democrats, all, or just about all, Either Democrats or a couple of Republicans that worked for President Obama. They're not looking at the other side. They're not looking at the Hillary Clinton, horrible things that she did and all of the crimes that were committed. They're not looking at all of the things that happened. Yeah, none of that is true. Uh, I will show you later uh, which party they belong to and who they were appointed by. Suffice it to say that Donald Trump was about 100% wrong in that statement. So uh, now, uh, one more on uh, the Attorney General, under which all of this is happening, that's Jeff Sessions. Are you frustrated that the Attorney General is not your personal lawyer and is not there to protect you when you've broken the law, Donald Trump? Well, let's find out. Uh, the Attorney General made a terrible mistake when he did this and when he recused himself, or he should have certainly let us know if he was going to recuse himself. And we would have used a, put a different Attorney General in. So he made what I consider to be a very terrible mistake for the country. It's amazing, he admits obstruction of justice so regularly and so publicly that it confuses people. He keeps saying, if I had known that Jeff Sessions was gonna work for the American people and not for me, well, I wouldn't have hired him. I want him to protect me. And the fact that he recused himself and was honest about it and didn't protect me, instead did his job as Attorney General, well, that bothers me greatly. <laughs> Why didn't you protect my law breaking? I, I wish I would have gotten rid of Jeff Sessions. Look, normally you'd have to do document requests, other raids of other people's homes and offices. You'd have to do depositions to find out this incriminating in evidence. But he keeps saying it over and over again. Why won't the Attorney General protect me? That's not his job. He's the Attorney General of America, not of you. But he thinks, well, I am the country, I'm the president. No, that's not how this country works. You're not a dictator, you're not the ruler of all of us. You're supposed to be our representative. So your attorney general is the top law enforcement officer. He's supposed to enforce the law, whether it applies to you or the rest of us. It is the only thing that Jeff Sessions that has ever done that is principled and decent. And of course, Trump hates him for it. Uh, now, uh, this is a fun little compilation uh, that we did. Uh, Donald Trump, what's the one word that you would use uh, to describe what's happened here? It's a disgraceful situation and it's a disgrace. It's frankly a real disgrace and it's a disgrace. 
It's a disgrace. So I just think it's a, a disgrace that a thing like this can happen. <laughs> yeah, that seems clear that you certainly think that. All right, so he wasn't done yet, that was yesterday. So this morning he wakes up in a rage. So he tweets out in all caps as usual, a total witch hunt. He thinks that's clever, that somehow that's gonna get him off. <laughs> that's what Nixon said. Nixon literally called Watergate a witch hunt before he resigned in disgrace. Oh, There's that term again. Um, so then he tweeted out, attorney client privilege is dead. No, it's not. Uh, so it, it, an attorney uh, cannot break the law either. So we'll get to an, a fuller explanation of that in a second. Uh, but first on the uh, idea of this, uh, yeah, on the, uh, the attorney client privilege, Richard Painter, who uh, worked as the uh, head of ethics for the Bush administration and a Republican, uh, now not fond of the Trump administration to be fair, but not fond of them because they keep being unethical. Anyway, points out he's a lawyer. He says, no, there is a crime fraud exception to the attorney client privilege as there has been for centuries. And then he puts the case there in case Trump wants to read that old case, which I'm sure he does. Okay, uh, Trump not understanding the law, no. Well, here's another tweet uh, from another expert, Joyce Alina writes in, um, or Alina, I should say, uh, there are special requirements for authorizing a search warrant of an attorney's office. Both the assistant attorney general for the criminal division and the deputy attorney general signed off on this one, possibly signaling a crime fraud exception to the usual privilege for attorney client communications. So you cannot commit a crime and one of fraud and then go, what, 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 I'm an attorney, I'm an attorney. No, that doesn't make you above the law either. That's of course in regard to Michael Cohen. Now, we go back to the New York Times. They explain the FBI agents who raided the office of President Trump's personal lawyer on Monday were looking for records about payments to two women who claimed they had affairs with Mr. Trump and any information related to publisher of the National Enquirer's role in silencing one of the women, several people briefed on the investigation said. Because in the case of one of the women, the National Enquirer paid her $150,000 for a scoop and then buried that scoop and never ran it. Now, this is a common MO for the National Enquirer, which works hand in glove with Donald Trump and has for a long time, well before uh, Trump ran for office. Uh, well, that's the National Enquirer basically helping the campaign by paying $150,000 and then not reporting it. So that could also be a campaign vi uh, finance violation. Can't wait to see them in court and can't wait to see the documents that Cohen has in regards to the National Enquirer, which he struck many deals with. Mm. That's gonna be good. More from the New York Times. Now this is really important. The involvement of Mr. Rosenstein, uh, who authorized this, and top prosecutors in New York in the raid of Mr. Cohen's office makes it harder for Mr. Trump to argue that his legal problems are the result of a witch hunt led by Mr. Mueller. In addition to Mr. Rosenstein, who's the deputy attorney general, all of the top law enforcement officials involved in the raid are Republicans, Mr. Mueller, Christopher A. Ray, the FBI director, and Jeffrey Berman, the interim United States attorney in New York. They're all Republicans, almost all appointed by Donald Trump, including Rod Rosenstein. He is a Republican appointed by Trump to be the deputy attorney general. But again, Trump's like, but why aren't you covering up for my crimes? <laughs> oh my God, I'm so angry at Rosenstein. Well, you shouldn't be, that's his job. And by the way, credit to these Republicans for being principled and doing the right thing and actually doing their job despite a world of pressure from the leader of their own political party. And, and Berman particularly appointed Trump went outside of normal protocol to make sure that Berman got that position. Berman is a former law partner of Rudy Giuliani, a huge ally of Donald Trump, and he authorized the warrant. Oh, They gotta have devastating evidence for those Republican allies of Donald Trump to say, yeah, this is really bad. You should really raid his home and his office. Wow, can't wait to see that evidence in open court. Okay, now um, back to more facts here and we go to MSNBC here. They uh, had an expert in Frank Figluzzi. He is 
uh, a former FBI um, uh, director. And so uh, let me give you his quotes. He says, this could primarily, uh, this could be primarily assistant director, I should be clear, former FBI assistant director. Uh, this could be primarily about Stormy Daniels. If you think about the election violation, that could be the contribution in kind by paying her off. If you think about bank fraud, it could be getting a home equity loan to pay her off. If there's tax violations, it could be fabricated Delaware Corporation to pay her off. He continues, remember Stormy is claiming that a threat was launched in the Las Vegas parking lot against her and her child. There could be a federal Hobbs Act violation. There could be interstate travel to communicate a threat. There could be interstate communication of a threat versus via a phone or a computer. And if that's found in the search results yesterday, if it's found that Trump knew about that, we're into a conspiracy to commit Hobbs Act. That's a serious crime. <laughs> of course, all of these are a serious crime. So how much time could Michael Cohen get? Uh, the expert here explains, if you're looking at a multiple violations of everything that we've heard come out of the possible search warrant motivations, you're looking at decades, a couple of decades potentially, if they're all found guilty. Damn. Now, Michael Cohen uh, did not get a job in the Trump campaign as he was hoping for. After all those years of loyal service to Donald Trump, and all those things that he did for Donald Trump, including paying $130,000 to Stormy Daniels out of his own pocket. And then he didn't get a job at the Trump White House either. That's how loyalty is repaid by Donald Trump. Well, now Cohen is facing potentially a couple of decades in jail. Are you sure Michael Cohen is gonna stay loyal to Donald Trump? Or maybe, just maybe, a guy who was unethical enough to represent Donald Trump in all those dealings might think, it's time to protect myself and not work for this guy anymore, who's clearly not only not protecting me, not giving me the things that he said he was gonna give me, but if it's a state case in New York, the president cannot protect him. Uh oh. Anonymous Trump advisor says, Trump won't like that Cohen is in the crosshairs, but you have to remember, he'd prefer the heat be on Cohen than on him. Well, that does sound very much like Trump. You know who else knows Trump? Michael Cohen, and Michael Cohen's gonna know that. So finally, we're gonna go to one other expert here, Louis Sunshine. She says, when it comes to Michael Cohen, and this is a former Trump Organization executive, so she knows them both. When it comes to Michael Cohen, anything is possible. Anything and everything is possible. <laughs> the president is in deep, deep trouble. Thank God. So let's see what he does next. Is he gonna blow up? Is he gonna fire Rosenstein and Sessions and Mueller? <laughs> because in order to fire Mueller, he's gotta fire Rosenstein. Uh, and in order to fire Rosenstein, he might have to fire Sessions. Remember, uh, there was a Saturday night massacre under Nixon, which then led to uh, threats of impeachment, which led to his resignation. Uh, we don't know how Trump is going to react um, as more news comes out about what Michael Cohen might do. But if Michael Cohen flips, it's good night, Irene. Can't wait, <laughs> even if he doesn't flip. They have all of his documents. No, no, not yet. Ladies and gentlemen, not yet. But we're getting way, way closer. If you want to get the whole Young Turks show every single day, become a member, tytnetwork.com slash join. And once you do, you'll be saying, you know, I'm like a smart person. Or you might say, I think it's weird. Or you might say, oops. No, that won't be that one. It won't be that one. It'll be great, trust me. TYTnetwork.com slash join.